Today, I'm going to show a good reason for using TypeScript generics with React Hook Form. So let's get right to it. I was asked a great question in the comments of one of my recent videos. It says, hi Dave, I have a question about the name type for the input with label component. That's a custom component that I built for use with React Hook Form. It says, how can we make it show a type error if we use a name that doesn't exist in the schema? Well, let's look at the code here and you can see my input with label custom component here that I've built for React Hook Form. And it accepts two props. One is the field title, that's what will be displayed for the component. The other is name in schema. And so this needs to match a name that is in the form schema that we have built. And if we scroll up here for the form, you can see, let's find it real quick we get this schema that we pass into our Zod resolver here with React Hook Form. So it's the user schema in this example. I'm also passing in the type user to the form. Now, essentially this type user needs to match default values here. So it's also the type of default values. And we'll get back to that. But first of all, what they're really asking here in the question, and thank you for that good question, is what if we put a typo here or provide a name that is not really in the schema. Right now, this is not validating anything. We don't get a red squiggly saying this is incorrect because we're not passing in a generic that will validate this name in schema against the actual schema. So let's look at how we can set that up. Let's make the tutorial official and roll that footage. I'm going to go to my custom input with label component that I built here. And first we're going to look at the props that this component expects. You can see name and schema is just a string, but we want to use a TypeScript generic here. So let's go ahead and pass a generic in. You typically see the letter T when just one generic is used, but you could use any letter here you really want to. After that, we've got name and schema is a string. Well, we want it to be a key of whatever type we pass in. So that's T, but we're not quite finished yet because that doesn't necessarily mean it would be a string. Let's mouse over name and schema. It still has any right there. Let's go ahead and say, and string. Now that might not change what we've got here. Let's find out. Still says any right there for now, but we're not quite finished because we haven't put that here yet. But what we want to have here is a key of whatever type we pass in, and we also want to say it's a string. If we don't say it's a string, it's going to have another possibility or two. So that's why we have the ampersand and combine the key of T with a string. Now let's go ahead and pass down the rest of the generic here. So we need to pass it in to the input with label, but then I'm also going to press Alt Z so this wraps down just so we can see props over here. We also need to have it over here with the props. So now the component is receiving this. Let's mouse over once again, see if this has changed. Now it knows it's key of T and string. Let me show what I was thinking earlier when I moused over just a little too soon. Now if I mouse over, it says key of T, it doesn't say it's necessarily a string. And then when we look here at name, we get a problem. It says string number symbol is not assignable to type string. So if we come back up here, we add our and string back. Now if we go down here, name equals name in schema, it knows it's not only a key of whatever type we pass in, it's also a string and there's no problem here. But there is a problem. I've got one little red dot over here on the right. So let's scroll down. Maybe there's some place that TypeScript just can't quite infer what we have planned or has another issue. And yes, it's in the form.set value. Now remember I'm working with React hook form here. So I'm calling the set value method and it doesn't like this empty string here. And if we look, it says it's not assignable. So what we really need to do, because it's just kind of getting its type from what's passed in, we need to go ahead and put dot to string right here. And now this will be okay too. So you just have to check even after you've assigned that type, we know this is going to be a string. We said it earlier. Now we're just helping out this method infer the correct type right here. So it doesn't have an issue. Okay, so after that, we have completed the adjustments to our input with label component. It now accepts a TypeScript generic. We can pass in whatever schema and we can validate. So let's go back. Well, first of all, let's look at our user schema because this is a simple example. This would be much more helpful if in a business application where you have large forms, lots of inputs, a huge schema. 
But in the small example, you can see we've got first name, last name, email. We also have ID right here. And then we're just defining the type by using infer here from Zod, so type of user schema. So that's what we're using back here. We're still not passing in the schema here. We need to do that. And there's a couple of ways we could do that. One is be passing that predefined user type. Now you can see it has an issue right here for sure because we didn't fix the typo. But once I fix the typo, then it says it's okay. So it is working as expected. But I also want to show, because this might be specific to this application and this component, you might want to use it in many different applications. So I just want to show one way you could always have this work with React Hook Form, say type of default values, because React Hook Form always has the default values. Now let's see what the issue is here. Not find name, oh, I didn't define it ahead of time up here, I just defined it inside. So you want to predefine default values. You would say const default values, have that equal what we have here. And I have done this with larger forms before. So there we have const default values. Now that it's defined down here, let's just spread in default values. And that's what's expected in that slot for the form. So now we have a value here that we can set a type of when we come down here and use it. So type of default value should also work in this spot rather than any specific schema like user that we had. So now I'm just going to copy this and of course pass the same type to each of these components. So now if I change email, if I have a typo, yeah, it's going to identify that. It's going to validate each one of these values for the name in schema prop. So that's how we want to do that. A little short tutorial today because it's a holiday week in the US, but I hope this helps you get started with TypeScript generics in your React components and custom React hook form inputs. I'm also going to write a blog post about this topic, and when I publish it on my blog, you'll find it at Dave Gray. Dot codes. And remember, this video is based on a question left in the comments of another video. So be sure to leave a comment or question below, and you may influence the next video I make. A quick thank you to my patrons. Holy Coder is a progress provider. Eldad is a senior. And my junior patrons. Programming Polyglot, Tim, Philippe, Morgan, Isaac, Will, Ernie, Scott, Stacy, Philip, Abe, Javier, Michael, Alexi. You're helping me reach my goals. Thank you. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon, it has exclusive content and early release content. And it's not one of those Patreons that doesn't get many posts. I'm active on there every week. I'll put a link to it in the video description, so please check it out if you haven't. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day. Let's write more code together very soon.